All right, you guys asked for it. Ableton Live version 12 of the MPC Studio 2 is here today. I'm dropping. It. Let's check it out. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy B Crow with X Producer B. Um, here today, coming at you with another controller script drop. Uh, this is one that's been highly requested. Uh, basically, it's adding version 12 support to the Studio 2. Um, the hacks weren't really working out too well. And also, um, I got the screen working in this version update. So it's not just a version change. I introduced some more functionality and changed some bug scripts in the fit. Uh, I introduced some more functionality and removed some bugs in the script. Uh, so it's going to work better for you as well. Uh, this script is not free anymore. It's going to be on my website. Link is in the description. It's only $15 door. I'm not charging an arm and leg for all this work that I've been doing for you guys. I really want to get it to you in a way uh, that, that's helpful for you, but also makes this worthwhile. So go down in the link in the description to get this script. And so uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, we're going to check it out. Uh, but the first thing we got to tackle is installation. So let's do that now. All right. So it, to install it, once you once you purchase the script, you'll get a download, a zip file. Uh, I got it right here on my desktop uh, on a Mac. If you just double click it, it'll automatically extract it for you. Um, I already have it named properly. MPC underscore studio underscore MK2. If you double click that, it'll extract it into a folder uh, right here that has the same name. All you're going to do copy that folder okay go into your uh, into your installation ableton live installation which on a mac is at music ableton um, user library and then remote scripts um, and what you're going to do is just paste that right on in here um, it's got to be named like this if it's not named like this it will not recognize the controller script is available all right once that is cool uh, we're going to open up Ableton Live. All right, I got Ableton Live open. We can go into settings, uh, go find the controller script, MPC Studio. There it is, MPC Studio MK2. All right, uh, you can see the yellow bar says it's active. Now we just got to choose the ports for it. So let's go to the public port. Don't do the MIDI port. Uh, those are private and unreserved only for um, the MPC software. All right, now you can see I got the device uh, lit up like it's supposed to. Everything works uh, like it is supposed to, but not only does everything work like it's supposed to, but we also got this, the screen that works. All right, and that's up changed. I don't know if you can see that. It's hard to see on this camera, but as you can see that uh, when I change the, the track, the screen updates to show you what track you're on. All right. So all the main features still work. Uh, there are some bug fixes I had to do as far as the pad colors and what mode you're in, um, how they light up. Some of the colors didn't light up at all. Um, there's also some fixes I had to update for, for version 12 regarding some, some internal Python stuff that doesn't really change the functionality of it, but just improves the performance and, and uh, changes some of the, or removes some of the bugs from the old one. Uh, but the biggest update is this, is, is, is the screen. Now we can, we can get it working. Now, uh, I've got to warn you, this screen is small. It's going to be hard for you to really any, get any productivity out of the screen just because of how small the screen is. Not only that, Ableton Live's version of Python, the environment that they give you, for whatever reason, it is very slow. And so the screen updates is very slow because I had to kind of write my own graphics library inside of Python in order to get the screen working. Anybody has got any remote programming experience knows that you don't really write graphics in Python. You do that in a faster language like C++ or C or something like that. Um, but nonetheless, I got it to work. However, it runs much better standalone or it runs much better um, even in FL Studios Python. But in Ableton Live, for some reason, sending those SysX messages to the device is very, very slow. So don't expect it to be speedy. Um, and it also limits what you can actually do with the screen. Like I can't really update meters live on the screen because it's just too slow. Um, it wouldn't make sense to even put parameter controls like knobs and faders and things on the screen because it's just too slow. And so um, I'm going to make some more updates to the screen that I think can be useful and, and can work practically. Uh, but for now, uh, we're just doing track names and colors where, and then devices where you can see down there on the screen. So uh, let's get into, of course, how to use the script, because many of you guys are using this script already. Um, it works just like it would in the first one. Um, you know, you can we can load up here. I'll just give you a quick little demo. 
Um, I'll go to one of my favorite kits. All right. Pretty cool stuff. Works just like the previous one did. Uh, nothing new there. We can do use a tap tempo function to tap in the tempo. Da, 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 da. Now we got the tap tempo. Let's go ahead and record something. I didn't have uh, uh, quantize on that, so let me erase that right there. Turn on input quantize. Try it again. One, two, three, four. There we go. And keep it moving. You know, this is how I like to use Ableton Live. I, I like to keep the music going. Um, we can load up whatever we need, we need to load up. So. down same thing we can use it to record even though i'm on a different keyboard here right easy with this with this type of device that you can see it. I'm, I'm looking at it on the screen it doesn't show up very well on this camera but uh, I can see what device I'm on just by looking down at the uh, at the at the controller now so I don't even need to look up at the screen I know which I'm recording um, on it would be cool uh, maybe I can show what scene you're recording on as well that way you have better context um, when you're in a pad mode you know what I'm saying all right so let's do something here Just showing off. That was a horrible recording, but nonetheless, you can see what I did. All right, if you want to undo that, you can do it. Undo that, no problem there. Undo as many times as your as your heart content. <laughs> All right. So. There's not much that changes as far as the functionality of, of the script. All the pad modes still kind of work the same. The difference is you'll see the colors um, and the blinking will be more accurate to what's actually happening in your session. Sometimes the last time it would leave the, the pad still, still blank. But I find myself when I'm using this, that as long as I can see the color and the name of the track uh, and maybe the device that it's on, um, it will work. Also, if you look on the screen, uh, let me go to a darker one. Or let me just make this darker. Maybe you can see it better if I change it to a darker color. If I change the color or update the track name or anything, it'll update on the screen as well. So if I change this track, uh, if I change this track name to, I don't know, uh, basic drums, you see that it updated on the screen as well. And so anytime you make a change on the track, the screen updates. Anytime you make a change to the color, the screen updates will update um in future releases i plan on uh getting the device names to show up on the screen i'm testing that out right now i'm trying to get it to perform a little bit faster because right now it's just it's just terribly slow it's no reason to even try to implement it um also um i found out from the, i have an ableton push now and i like some of the features that the push does in integration first of all it's the best integration you can have with the uh with a with, with ableton live um, but I think I can steal some of the features 
from the push. For example, I would like to um, detect when a simpler is open and be able to go ahead and uh, uh, map the slices over the pads. It does that on the Ableton push. So I'm looking at the, uh, the simpler slice component that they have in the framework, see if I can implement that with the pad. That'll be another uh, feature update. If you buy this one, I'm not gonna charge you again uh, for another version. Uh, I'll just release an update and you can have that download fresh and I'll, I'll, I'll email out the fresh version to everybody that comes and downloads. So that's also why I want you to come and buy it because I got your information and if I do release another update, I'll be able to send you an email with, with a link to the updated script so you can go ahead and replace it and get any new features that I implemented. So, but that's all for right now. Uh, just wanted to drop this script. It works with Ableton 12. Go on the website, xproducerb.com. Go ahead and cop that script. Um, and uh, also like the video, man. Uh, subscribe to it, share it with everybody else you know that are users. If you're part of any forums, any platforms, you know people that use this stuff, go ahead and, and let them know that it's out there because I think we can, uh, can kind of pull together and make some great things happen. All right, that's it for the day. Deuces. Thank you.